Welcome back, my lovely listeners. Episode 37 of Quest for You. And as I'm recording this, it is a beautiful sunny July afternoon in Oakland, California. A city that has grown on me with all its rough edges, sometimes aggressive voices, but its creative spirit and colorful people. It's overcast mornings and breezy evenings, and it's most wonderful cafes and farmers markets. And I'm also right now looking at the number of downloads for my podcast episodes. Barely over 250, and it's my second month into this venture called Quest for You. And I don't really know if this number should be higher at this point. I don't know who's listening and if you will continue to listen if you are. And I don't know much beyond those numbers. There aren't many comments on my website either that would help me understand if this venture is helpful. But I know this. I will continue this because I enjoy it. It's an immense time commitment, but you know, it really keeps me on my toes. Challenged, thinking all the time focused. I actually just got back from one of my favorite coffee places here in Oakland and I I used to go there and just kind of watch people, maybe write in my journal and now I take my laptop and I'm so inspired. I just write down my thoughts that turn into episodes and so it is actually a really productive time for me there. For those of you who are listening and enjoy this podcast, Please help me spread it. I know I say it um, lately. I've been saying it a lot more. Send it to your friends and family and anyone you can think of. Because that's how things grow. You pass it along. You share things that, that you like and then others like it too. It's a process and I know I have to be patient. And this was a little bit of a lecture for myself, I admit. But sometimes I need it. And... I want to share something else since we're right in the middle of it. Believe it or not, but when I wake up, first thing, I listen to my podcast. Of course, I always want to make sure that the episode has posted the night before and to see if it sounds okay. But I also listen to my own content, interestingly, and it inspires me for my day ahead. Because just like you, I... Sometimes wake up disillusioned, frustrated, unhappy about things that happened or that are going to happen. And negativity always wants to creep in for some reason, first thing in the morning. So you have to fight it. It's amazing. My own podcast helps me and I hope it does the same for you. Today I want to talk about food. I know it's a little bit of a detour, but... It is about our relationship with food, and that still has to do with with us, with our quest for our best self. Food is an integral part of who we are. For some of us, it's an important contributor to our happiness, or maybe our unhappiness. So many people struggle with food, myself included. When I was in college and poor, food was never an issue. I bought only what I could afford, and that wasn't much. Starbucks was a dream that I definitely could not afford. But then with affluence came access to all the amazing food we are surrounded with. Remember that pastry shop I mentioned a few episodes ago? I could eat there every day. In fact, I was there today. Well, I'm not going to say what I got. (laughs) The variety is huge and everything tastes out of this world. Here in Oakland, for example, there are amazing restaurants everywhere. I'm sure that's true for any city. And while I could afford to eat out several times a week, I don't. I prefer to control the ingredients that go into my food and I'm usually very conscious about the quality and the preparation of my food. And I actually enjoy cooking. The availability of food, both good and not so good, it's almost comparable to social media. It's overwhelming, always on, distracting, too many options, often cheap and luring, There's an overabundance of food. Aside from grocery stores, everyone seems to sell food. Drug stores, 
Target sells food to corner cigarette shop, gas stations, Home Depot. I think on the checkout line there's candy. Restaurants, cafes, eateries as they're now called, coffee shops. They're everywhere too, on every corner. And then now there are these food delivery services, meal delivery services. They already cook your meal, you just need to heat it up. And new ones pop up every day, creative ideas. I feel like all day long we are confronted confronted with food choices. Even at work, which is kind of a neutral place. An office building, for example, shouldn't have any food, right? But food shows up. Here in California, it's it's almost a benefit that companies feel like they need to provide. I guess because Google started it all back in the day. And that is free snacks. Sometimes entire free meals at companies like Facebook. In addition... Employees cater lunches for meetings, and then the leftovers appear in your area. People bring donuts on Fridays, leftover brownies on Mondays, and chocolates from a recent overseas trip. It's very challenging not to think about food if it's constantly under your nose. But the thing with food is this. Not only is it abundant and commercialized, it has also gotten really complicated. Nutrition labels are as long as bar menus. And everything promises something and is somehow good for us. We need to get back to basics. Food has taken on a huge transformation over the last 50 years. From basic food, from field and stream, companies began to commercialize food. And then they sold it to eager consumers who were ready for something that involved less work than cooking a piece of meat for four hours. And the result? Everything came in boxes and packages, ready to eat. Just add water. And our bodies adjusted. Well, somewhat. If you ask yourself, how do you really feel after that donut, that Pop-Tart, that bag of chips with that canned cheese, what would you say? You may not even know because you have lived on certain foods for too long. Your body is used to feeling a certain way and so are you. But if you tune into your body a little bit more and listen... You may realize a few things. Maybe you're always tired in the afternoons, constantly burping, feeling bloated, or feeling hungry right after you eat. Trouble falling asleep or waking up, and then making all sorts of interesting human noises all day long. (laughs) And just because our friends and co-workers complain of the same issues, that doesn't mean it's normal. This could be your body talking. It's telling you, hey... I'm working hard here. This is not easy what you're feeding me. But we often ignore our body signals because our brain is happy. The cake looked amazing, so we could not resist. And then we put up with the stomach ache. Forget about which diet you should follow. And also forget about calories and weight loss for a while, which I know these things are usually on top of everybody's mind. But this is not what this episode is about. And I also think that's not what you should prioritize. It's about finding out what is good for you and what is not when it comes to food. What will make you feel your best? What food will help you accomplish your goals? When I eat junk, you can forget about me. I feel drained. On those days, I don't usually make it to the gym because I'm so tired. I cannot focus. My brain is clouded. My stomach rumbles. I usually go straight home and I go to bed. What is your relationship with food? Do you struggle resisting delicious food? Do you overeat or undereat out of fear of weight gain? Are you confused about what to eat? Food directly influences our health, our performance, and our brain. It affects our mood, our attitude, and ultimately it affects how we show up in this world. Always thinking about what to eat next steals us of valuable time we could use to dedicate to our goals and projects. I'm not here to tell you how to live. I'm not here to tell you what to eat or how much you should weigh. But I'm here to help you push forward with your dreams. You need to look at your relationship with food. That means how much you eat, what you eat, and how you eat. You need to look at how food makes you feel and how you feel about food. If you don't feel your best every single day, then start analyzing your diet. Because I can tell you from my own experience and from the changes that I have made at 
it is possible to feel amazing every day. Food is meant to nourish us. It should not be something to get anxious over. It should not be something that causes us health issues. And you don't need expensive tests to figure out what your body is telling you and what diet you should be following. You just need to listen to your body. So I have two steps for you. Unless you have some major health issues that need tension, if you just want to find out if you're on the right track, maybe you're not feeling 100%, maybe you have some of the symptoms that you think are normal that I described earlier, start here. One, listen to your body. Tune into your body a bit more while you eat. I sometimes look over when I drive and I see people eating a burger or a sandwich while they drive. And I say, really? That cannot be an enjoyable experience. Take time to eat and eat slowly and consciously. It's also called mindful eating. Relax while you eat. Do you have a nice patio or a balcony? Use it. Too often we have these beautiful spaces in our home and we never really sit in them and enjoy them. Go outside with your plate and admire your garden and the smell in the air while you eat. Watching TV or reading the news while eating is called mindless eating. Take time to reflect on the food you eat and how it makes you feel. You can take time out of your morning, quiet time to think about the day ahead. I do that at times. When I have a busy meeting ahead or a day that is not in the office and it's off-site where I know there will be a lot of food temptations... I think about the day and I make conscious decisions of what I'm going to eat and what food I'm going to avoid. Become more aware. In the back of your mind, you already know what the issues are. You just have to bring them to the consciousness and decide to address them. I say it again. Food is meant to nourish you and provide you with the energy you need to be successful at the things that you do. Your brain needs food to function at its peak. Your body needs food to Keep up with its physical demands. Proper food will help you delay the aging process and keep health issues away. Provide your body with nourishment. Don't just give it temptations that look appealing. Think of the long, t long term with every bite you take. Most boxed and packaged food is not food. It's manufactured crap. That's what I call it. Make your life simple and eat real food. And then you don't have to worry about reading food labels anymore. And start looking at how you feel after you eat certain foods. There are these frozen drinks that Starbucks sells that I know they're delicious. When I had my first job, I would reward myself with one of those from time to time. But I remember that they always gave me a huge amount of gas. Always. And I'm not sure if it was the milk or what ingredient they put in there, but I haven't had them in years. Your body will tell you what to stay away from. And number two, eliminate the food that you think could be an issue. Or change your habits such as late night eating if you then cannot sleep or wake up feeling really full. Try it out. Give yourself a week and then see how you feel. And if you still cannot tell, eat the food again after a break. If it was something that your body didn't think was good, your response will be more pronounced. There are actually several diet programs I've read about that They offer these 10-day detox plans or elimination periods where you eliminate a wide variety of foods that can create issues for people such as sugar, dairy, gluten, alcohol, and anything processed. And then they have you reintroduce them one by one slowly to see how you respond. And that's how you can discover the foods that cause you discomfort and inflammation. But even more than that, you may discover behavioral issues with food an addiction to sugar you didn't know you had, a need for alcohol that you didn't realize you had because you drink it every night, things that you may not have consciously registered. And lastly, I want to encourage you. Enjoy your food. The more you become conscious about your food, the more you will enjoy it. Once you stop eating at random and take more care in selecting your food, the joy will come along with it. Enjoying means indulging from time to time, 
Thanks to other wonderful mindful people, we now have many decent options for the days that we seek some pleasure. There's dark chocolate that is loaded with antioxidants. There's low calorie ice cream that doesn't give you all the gas and still tastes amazing. There are dry farmed wines that have less sugar than regular wines. There's almond yogurt if you're sensitive to dairy and it tastes like dessert. And I'm talking only about the plain one, it is amazing. So make a conscious decision to reward yourself with food from time to time and then savor it. If your relationship with food is troubled, make a conscious decision today to work on it and fix it. Just like any other relationship in your life. Nothing should hold you back from being your best and most amazing self. Wishing you a joyful day filled with delicious food. Until next time, much love.